Hello and welcome to the Jinder Mahal Appreciation Podcast. I am joined by Felix the Negro, Super Incog Negro, and Hawk Kaiser, the final brave, the leader of the Jinder Mahal Appreciation Fan Club. Now give us an <laughs> intro, Mr. Jinder Mahal himself. Uh, He's actually very shy. We didn't, <laughs> didn't get his Skype name, so uh I guess you couldn't join us. <laughs> what is wrong with that? First of all, I don't even like Jinder Mahal, you fucking bandwagoners. What? We, we, all right, now hang on. We were all on the train for our boy Jinder long before he started getting this ridiculous push. You cannot hinder the gender. You you can't hinder the gender, but gender will hinder your fucking consciousness like he did well, Finn Let's tell Bauer. the people what we're talking about, in case you don't know, in case you don't give a fuck, skip ahead, but <laughs> Jinder Mahal, WWE, last week on SmackDown, our boy won a six-pack uh, ex- challenge to become the number one contender to be the world heavyweight champion or the WWE champion. I forget which one it is. Uh, it's really technically different. it's technically the same thing. It doesn't matter. The undisputed champion. In that no, that's not. <laughs> It doesn't exist anymore. <laughs> anyway, continue. I'm sorry. At Backlash, he's going to go up against the Viper, Randy Orton, and he's going to probably job. But <laughs> well, it's people that are end. going nuts because Jinder Mahal, in case you don't know, is an actual jobber. Out of the last 50 matches he's had, <laughs> he's lost every single He's lost all but two of them. He's only won two matches since last year. Which is now, really funny. Which is really funny because in the original NXT tournament, if I'm remembering right, he actually was um, up against Seth Rollins in the final yes, round. He was, yes, yes, he was really good in NXT. And then as soon as he moved up to the main roster, he be- he immediately dropped to jobber heel status. He, he The week before, he literally got squashed by uh Finn Baylor after giving him a concussion though so it wasn't it wasn't a fucking <laughs> it wasn't a perfect okay which is it's actually kind of funny you notice how Finn's eyes were totally dead in that match and yet he was still able to wrestle what is Finn Balor made out of uh, he got concussed for one week but no you get hit by a boy hard body Jinder Mahal you know? it's so weird it's like so let, let's let's address something about gender. Apparently, gender isn't using any type of like physical enhancement drugs. Despite yeah, what he you doesn't would, use any steroids or nothing. Despite what you may think, he really just put in the work. And like I said off uh, off recording, uh, I think he may be getting rewarded for his hard work because Vince McMahon loves big sweaty fucking men. Well, there's that, and uh, so recently there was an there's an article we'll end up linking it that came out from uh, what culture, you know everybody's favorite. The reason they believe and many others believe that gender's getting a push might do might be due to the fact that WWE is trying to break into the indie not in not indie but in uh, the, Indian uh, Indian not. scene. And uh, in order to do that, they want to get some Indian talent over. I mean, yeah, because they got. You noticed in that uh, six pack challenge, the fucking Bollywood boys showed up out of nowhere. Uh, yeah, the Bollywood boys, but they're going by the Singh brothers now. <laughs> and if you also notice with the the cruiserweights, they're giving uh, they've been giving uh, uh, Mustafa Ali a push too. Wait a minute, he's not Indian. He's not? No. Oof. I feel bad. Oof, you should. Uh, let's let's jump off this for now. We'll we'll talk more about our boy gender if more develops from this, definitely. Uh but let's stay on the wrestling topic. Uh do you want to take the, the good news or the bad news? Let's go with the good news. How could it be possibly any worse? Uh, okay, well, Going off the good news, you know, our boy Braun Strowman, the hero of Monday Night Raw, Braun! he destroyed the ring in a feat that's only been seen 
three times before in all the WWE. On the big show every single time, I think. Yes, the big show was involved in every one of them. Uh, when Brock, it was one where uh, Big Show and Mark Henry did a superplex, and then one where fucking uh, Brock Lesnar fucking did a F five that destroyed the ring, and the final one was this one, Braun Strowman did a superplex and killed Big Show. <laughs> Which, admittedly, I think that might be his kayfabe the end moment. Yeah, it, it makes about it makes about perfect sense. Big Show's got maybe like 10 months left on his contract and then I think he's done. But before that happened, yo, our boy Blonde was taking out the trash, bodying jobbers left and right backstage, <laughs> literally putting Kalisto in the trash to metaphorically show that Luchador is dead in the WWE <laughs> and it will never come back. That style is fucking buried. I, I really hope because Callisto's actually really good. And that's really sad. But I'm really hoping, more so than anything, that if they're going to push some... If they're going to ever push some... Uh, some... Oh God. If they're ever going to push some luchadors... Then this is a personal hope. Come on, give my boy Lindsay Dorado something, yo. <laughs> Lindsay Dorado. You know, you know it's bad when dude only appears on main event. Yeah. Like, it means he's stuck in developmental hell, like the developmental before NXT. Yeah, when you were on main event, like this is how importance goes. <clears throat> At the bottom, you got main event. Then above that, you got 205 Live. I'm sorry, I love it, but come on. Then you got NXT. Then you've got SmackDown, and of course, Raw is the big show for... Big show! Dun, dun. <clears throat> the big show. For no reason, even though I like SmackDown way better right now. So, hell. Well, now the bad news. Uh, one of Akuma's favorite wrestlers, he swears, Ember might be uh, injured for a while. All right, and it might be it might be a short while, it might be a long while. But why don't you hit him with that news? So there was a house show, probably I think sometime this week, maybe last week, that uh, she was involved in. She was involved in a four-way match with uh, her, Ruby Riot, and I think the uh, Pey the team of Peyton Royce and Billy Kay, which they're never going to face each other because they work perfectly as a heel team. Uh, and in the middle of the match, the match got broken up when Asuka showed up, and during the match, Asuka went to throw Ember into uh, the turnbuckle, but Ember was too low when she got th when she got released, and she had to jump. And when she jumped, she launched herself too far and actually caught her shoulder on the barricade. And it may have been dislocated, it may have been broken, but whatever it was, it sent from uh, from the officials and many of the people who were actually at the event. Apparently it hurt so it busted her up so bad that she actually couldn't even get up. She was like out on the floor crying. That's how bad it was. So, see, they need to stop doing ri this risky shit at house shows because nobody like why would you the risk reward ratio isn't there. Why would you do shit that could hurt yourself? Nobody's even watching. You're probably not even getting paid as much as if you show up on TV because like gotta put in the word. Look, fucking Finn Balor, not Finn Balor, uh, Seth, Seth Rollins, Rollins destroyed uh, his leg on a house show trying to do a fucking power bomb to somebody who's way heavier than he can lift. Well, it was a, uh, it was a flip. It was uh, somewhat of a Canadian destroyer or something. I'm, I'm not sure. It was, I remember seeing it, but I forget the name of that kind. It was just a flip power bomb. He tried to flip power bomb Kane. And then look what happened to, I think it was Dash, Dash Wilder yeah, from the Revival. His fucking jaw got shattered. Uh, and then don't forget Austin Aries. Austin Aries uh, nearly lost his eyeball to Shinsuke Nakamura. But then again, that was because Shinsuke used to be insane and would actually the go King out of his strong way. strong style. And used to, like, try to murder everybody he got into, a ring, into the ring with. Well, that's because strong style is just overpowered. 
I mean, if like Shinsuke was so used to it at the time, he was used to facing off with AJ in Japan. So I can't really. I mean, I can I can be upset about that, but at least uh, Austin Aries got better from that. If somebody is not used to strong style, then they will get injured. And if, for those of you who don't know, strong style is a, it's a form of wrestling popularized in New Japan where they actually hit each other, but they know how to take the hits. Yeah, and uh, that you you just reminded me of something. I cannot remember his name. He was he's really popular in Japan. Uh, that one wrestler. The one who fucking smashed his head open yeah. and fucking ended his own career being a fucking idiot. Yep. Yeah, I know he, exactly what you're talking about. Yeah, I you'll have to forgive us because uh, we have friends who watch more um, Japanese wrestling and stuff. I haven't actually watched Japanese wrestling since uh, Nakamura and AJ left. Uh, aside from watching, you know, that six star, the six star classic with Kenny Omega. But like, um, he concussed himself, busted his head wide open. And he, yeah. the worst part about that is he could have concussed the other guy. Uh, I believe it was, it was uh, Okada. Okada. Yeah, he no, could have. No, he he didn't. He couldn't have cussed. Oh wait, you're saying it was Okada? No, it wasn't Okada who couldn't. No, it was himself. Okada. No, he did he it. Could have he could have put them both out of there. Like it's so stupid. Like why would you 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 can sell a headbutt so much better than doing a, a real one. And like you knew it was over because he was just like he was just standing there, and then he looked to the side, and the fucking blood started pouring out of his forehead. Yeah, it, like his career is actually over to yeah. the point where uh, I hear that he like it's not bleeding on the brain, but it's like almost bleeding on the brain. So he he's done. Strong style indeed. Some shit you can't strong style. Like what the fuck? <laughs> That's that's Shibata. Just <clears throat> uh, yeah, Shibata. His name is uh, Katsuyori Shibata. Yeah, he's he's fucking he's done. Like Rick? he, like everybody thought. Oh no, it might be, it might be a work because they play all. They 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 live under the idea of kayfabe in Japan. Like they very much believe all kayfabe. But no, he's fucking done. Uh, hold on. Oh. <laughs> Before we move on to the next topic. Those niggas wrestle as Spider-Man and the Terminator is all copyright laws. I don't think they live by kayfabe necessarily. No, no, but they report their they report injuries like they like their real injuries. That's what I mean. Yeah, but, but uh, you know, no, I'm, it's it's sad because I hear Shibata was really good. I I never really watched many of his matches. I wouldn't know. It's going to be a case where you end up going back and watching his matches and you're like, oh, it's such a shame that he fucking killed himself. You mean like every time? To- I don't, I don't want to get into that. That's too bad. It's too bad. It's too bad of a thing to listen to right now. <laughs> anyway, uh, injuries in wrestling. Who'd have thunk? Well, yeah. Who would have known that you can injure yourself in this so-called fake sport? Uh, well, injuries happen in everything but uh, like like did you see well no you guys probably never saw that fucking uh that one um oh god what was it it was a vine or something that happened with the rock where he was filming that one shitty movie with kevin hart are you me i i know what you're talking about i know what movie you're talking about at least yeah because that movie was well i don't want to say that movie was bad Maybe it just it didn't appeal to me at all. Although I watched it in theaters with my buddies, uh, he actually like split, he actually like broke two of his fingers, like his middle finger and his uh, what do they call that ring finger, and he like snapped them back in the place because he's the fucking rock, and that's just how the rock rolls. <laughs> the most electrifying man. Uh... The most. But I want to, you know, I'm sorry. I just I remembered because I was talking about the rock. Uh, have you guys heard about what happened? All of the literal drama that's going on with the Fast and the Furious right now? What, uh, what do you mean? You, you, you remember, like, maybe what? I guess it was a couple of months ago or about a year ago where The Rock posted on his uh, uh, Facebook, I think, or his Instagram where he was like, oh, man, I'm really enjoying working with all these people, but some of these people I'm working with are a bunch of candy asses oh, yeah. and stuff. Yeah, turns out, 
people did a lot of digging, and he might have just been talking about Vin Diesel. I don't know. I don't know about that. Well, here's the thing, and here's a little bit of proof to back this up. Uh, you ever, like, if you go and see the latest Fast and the Furious, which, by the way, apparently is doing so fucking good. They always do good. They, no, they I mean, always this is, no, I mean that this is the biggest open, the biggest worldwide opening weekend for a movie in history. Good. Well, like, I'm, just, I'm just saying the Fast and Furious movies, regardless of quality, they always do good. Like, <laughs> I don't understand why. And well, honestly, it's, I don't understand why they're action movies. They have fucking, they have some of the best action stars in them. They have fucking good-looking cars. They have good-looking people too. Yeah. Question mark. Even though like ninety percent of them are bald. Anyway. <laughs> anyway, no, moving guess. moving on. Uh, they were like, you know, you'll notice that uh, Vin Diesel and The Rock barely share any screen time. And the fact that there was supposedly a uh, a scene that Jason Statham and The Rock filmed behind the scenes to hint that they would be getting their own spinoff. And when Vin Diesel found out about this, since he produces the movies alongside of his sister, I think, as soon as Vin Diesel found out about this little thing that was filmed, he was so he was absolutely livid, and he got up and he like told all the other people he was like, "Cut that shit out of the fucking movie." Because he feels that The Rock is stealing his uh, spotlight. Okay. I mean, these are all these are all confirmed by a lot of different uh, a lot of different um, news sources. That it's crazy because Vin Diesel isn't even the star of the Fast and Furious uh, series. Uh, is he? Technically, he's not even. He hasn't been in all the movies because he's he was. I'm about to get into the Fast and Furious lore because it's actually pretty deep and it's <laughs> the Fast and Furious lore is deep and the movies aren't in chronological order. Vin Diesel started as the villain in the first movie and people don't really know that. And then in the second movie, he wasn't even in it. It was uh, Paul Walker and Tyrese. Oh, and the, what an and ensemble the... class. What an ensemble cast. <laughs> don't talk about what it did. And then in Tokyo Drift, it was a completely new cast because it was set in the future. It's set beyond all of this shit. <laughs> and it was, uh, well, it's not, I don't know if it's set beyond the, the current movie. Uh, it had fucking Bow Wow in it for some reason. Oh, God, I forgot Bow yeah. Wow was in the movie once yeah. at one point. I forgot he was a human being. I forgot, yeah, Bow Wow was really fucking famous at one point, and then he wasn't. <laughs> it's weird. All the littles, you know, fucking Little, little Romeo. Romeo uh, oh, I forgot about Little Romeo too. That wow. one guy who had a show on Nickelodeon. Well, oh, Romeo had a show little, on Nickelodeon too. Uh, yeah, yeah, little, little, uh, little, uh, 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 JJ. JJ. Yeah, yeah, that was a good show. Uh, I wonder why it disappeared. But uh, <laughs> anyway, yeah, and then there was, and then there was little that so Raven. Stop. stop. It. But, uh, yeah, Fast and Furious movies have a deep and complex lore. Uh, the Rock really only showed up, uh, he showed up at one, and then he just showed up in all the other ones. So, Vin Diesel might feel like he's creeping in on his territory, but then again, what does Vin Diesel know? He creeped in on Paul Walker's territory. It was dead, right? Uh... Don't, don't continue with that train of thought, because I feel that you were going to make a very very uncouth joke so there's rumors that there's gonna be another fast and furious movie fast and furious 10 well and it, I that's really... clearly that's cl it's definitely gonna happen but i'll be upset if the if by fast and furious 10 they haven't gone to space i'll be very upset i'll be like i don't know if they even acknowledge that paul walker is dead like in the in the latest movie, and they'll have to do it in ten because I thought they were gonna do it in the fuck in the last one because like he he had just died, and but he was still a star of that movie. So uh, from my understanding, they don't they don't acknowledge fully that he's dead. What's, what are they gonna do? Like, they're are they waiting for hologram technology to be perfected? <laughs> Hard light, like. Uh, 
Well, I mean, technically they could CG him into the movie. I mean, they could, but it would be... That would be... (laughs) Yuck. I mean, the CG technology looks pretty good sometimes. Do you not remember when they CG'd him, uh, dude from the old Star Wars movies into the new one? <laughs> yeah. He looked fine if it. He looked fine when you didn't look at him directly. Okay. If they, maybe if they have Paul Walker in the background in the movie or something, I don't know. that would be weird too. Well, but... they can just. What they really need to do is just kill him off screen, like what they're doing with uh, Leia, sort of. Yeah, I mean, you guys heard about that, right? Well, by the time uh, Carrie Fisher had died, they are, they were already done filming episode uh, eight. So and for episode parts. nine, they can yeah they can kill they can kill her off off screen. Which is weird because they said that she was actually going to have a very integral role to part nine. So I, I don't know how this is going to affect it. But then again, it's not like, it's not, apparently it's not like the directors don't really, the directors don't really give a shit, apparently. Because, um, there was a, there was a bunch of people, like, a a bunch of people who are diehard fans of the new Star Wars trilogy, I think it's a, I guess you call it a trilogy now? Whatever. Uh, who are diehard fans of the new Star Wars stuff, and, uh, they were asking, apparently, if you look at the new trailer for The Last Jedi... Kylo Ren actually has a scar on, like, I think the right side of his face in the trailer. And a lot of fans were like, wait, that doesn't make any sense because Rey's lightsaber actually cut up, like, the middle and, like, bridge of Kylo's nose. And uh, people were asking, like, sending out tweets to the uh, directors and the uh, producers, and they were like, what the hell's going on? Why is it over there? And I think it was the director who just straight out came and said, yeah, I changed that because it was dumb looking. So Typical. Very typical. And it's like... Fucking new age style. I was just like... in my To me, it was like... No. It, it, no. Welcome to because the Disney era. It's weird. It's like... it. Yes. You can say, oh, it's dumb looking, but to be honest, it's like there's a lot of really dumb looking stuff in movies and etc. That it just because it's dumb looking doesn't mean it doesn't make sense. It made more sense for it to be there. Yeah. Well, I mean, look, look, look. This is the difference between, like, say what you want about George Lucas. Say that he's a hack. Say that he can't write. Say that he's fucking dumb. <laughs> say that he say that he only married a black woman so that he could get away with saying nigger. Say that he doesn't know what poetry means, but he what he wrote made it had continuity, right? In the original Star Wars films, uh, Luke cut off Vader's hand, discovered that it was mechanical, and there was supposed to be symbolism between him and uh, Darth Vader, and so as a result. When Lucas made the prequel trilogies, he had to, like, he wouldn't just, uh, they're feeding, and let's just keep him, like, he had his hand cut off then and replaced with a mechanical hand, so it would make sense in the future. And he, he might say, oh, it's because it's poetry, it rhymes, but if you look at it, it's like, no, it, you're stupid, but it's pretty, it's, it's good that you made sure that there wasn't, like, a, a, a fucking... A hole there, like there wasn't a plot hole, like there was continuity. Darth Vader lost his hand in the past, got a mechanical hand, and that's why he had a mechanical hand in the future when Luke cuts it off. This is the polar opposite of that. And the movie just happened, it just happened two years ago. And Kylo Ren gets a scar, and then this director's just like, oh, I changed it because I didn't like how it looked. That's so stupid to me, that's so arrogant to me. I don't know. Well, well it's okay. Because he's a big name director. He's well, new Star he, Wars, well, and everybody loves Star Wars, right? Well, well, let's be fair. He is a big name director. If I'm remembering right, the guy's his only real big credit is uh, District Nine, which I love that movie. But he also made Chappie. So, what's his last name? Um, I forget his name. I forget his name, but he's the guy who made uh. District Nine and Chappie, and I, I like I liked uh, District Nine a lot. I think that was probably one of my uh, favorite current day sci fi movies. Yeah, it was a good movie. Too bad, and now he he has a fucking ego. 
Well, again, he, he, Neil Neil Blomkamp. Neil Blomkamp. What? Blomkamp? Yeah, I, I think that I think he's the guy who's currently directing the new Star Wars, if I'm remembering right. He made uh, Chappie, Elysium, District Nine. And I think that's just about all he really has his uh, he has his name on, if I'm remembering right. Got to check and make sure that last name isn't Judaic in origin, anyways. Oh my God! <laughs> Can you stop? Can you just stop? Did you Hot Kaiser didn't knows. even say anything. Stop! Just, just stop. What? And I think that, and I think he's directing the new Star Wars. I'm, pro I might be, I might be wrong here. And if that's true, then I'm gonna fucking kick myself in the face. Is there anything else we want to talk about Hollywood related? Um, Hollywood related. I have, I have nothing on my head. Do you, did you see anything happen this week that was probably stupid Hollywood? Which wouldn't surprise me. It's Hollywood, dumb fucking dumbest place in the world. Well, no, I didn't see anything. Uh... Interesting, I should say. Uh, so let's let's move over to like uh, anime and manga shit. Uh, oh, I know there's something you definitely want to talk about. The tragic tale. Well, I don't really care. I wasn't invested in it, but maybe Hakaiser cares just a little bit because his favorite show of all time, Keijo, failed sure, yeah, so. to. <laughs> last I checked, last I checked. Okay, no, I'm sorry. Okay, apologies, apologies to Neil Blomkamp, Camp, Blomkamp, whatever. Apologies to Neil Blomkamp. It's actually Ryan Johnson. Who spells the name Ryan like this? How R I R I A N. What the fuck? Oh, that's funny. you know what? You know what? Forget it. Your your name is Ryan Johnson. <laughs> Hey, I can say hey, I can say these things. It's not like I'm ever going to be famous. All right. If you are, if I okay, if I am famous, everybody remember this. If I am famous, then you have full right to bring back all of my bad jokes. And remember, they're jokes. I will fight you on the fact that they're jokes. Remember, the Otaku Clubhouse put this nigga on. Uh, so Keijo was cancelled the manga was cancelled the reason being that the anime turns out was a last ditch effort to advertise for the manga kind of like how you know light novel adaptations work and it didn't work like nobody went out and bought the manga volumes and the mangaka he was really sad about this but he said oh I'm surprised that the show was a hit overseas and in America. And to that, I just want to say, my man, my brilliant man, are you really surprised? <laughs> I mean, like, it's, it's a manga, it was a manga focusing on women with, let's, let's just say it, with uh, butt. It was all about asses, and it's like, you're, you're focusing, you. showing that in Japan. That's not gonna, it's not gonna fly too much. But, um, that, that's, that's pretty sad, honestly, because um, it's get it's getting like the reverse, it's getting the reverse problem that Batum had, where Batum was like, "Hey, our manga's doing pretty good. You guys want to get another season of the anime?" And some people were like, "I don't know, maybe." Yeah. And the director was like, "Hey, you know what happens if our if our shitty mobile game gets to the top five slot, then we will get another anime." And it ended up being number fifty. Eh, That's pretty well, good. the thing about Batum, I think Batum might be ending soon, and by soon I mean within the next two years because it fucking updates at, the, at a snail's pace, but I believe the arc they're in is like closing on the end, so once Batum finishes, it might get a season two, which uh, also will finish the anime, which would be good because I, I like reading the manga, honestly, but the, the anime adaptation is pretty good. I like seeing everything in motion. Yeah, no, uh, Batum was Batum was a pretty decent anime, pretty decent. Yeah, I'd say pretty decent. Yeah, anime. decent. Uh, but back on to Keijo, and this is something that's kind of sad, in the fact that this happens all the time. We all know about the fucking the downfall of Bleach, so right. Let's not even let's not even get too deep into that. Actually, it's kind of similar because Bleach's anime got canceled because it was. 
boring, low ratings, right? And the man it was it actually did help the manga because uh, Kubo announced, oh, this is the last arc. This is the final arc. And people started eating that shit up again. I think, I believe it uh, slightly peaked. It was declining steadily, the manga. And then it peaked a little bit when he announced the final thing. And then it just uh, it kept declining again. And then the manga got canceled. And we all saw what happened to Bleach. Like, uh, anybody seen Harry Bell around here? <laughs> It's really the. It's like Bleach is so. Bleach was probably the most obvious tale of. It's not popular. We're canceling it. So the writer has to be like, all right, I have to write. I have to. I have but so many weeks I can wrap this up in. Let me do it. You have so, three weeks to finish this, and he's just like, ah, oh, shit. <laughs> and he's just so, like, how am I possibly gonna end all of these interweaving uh, storylines and all these characters I created? How how will I show all of their futures? And then he's just, I won't. <laughs> <laughs> that happens in a that happens in a lot of a lot of mangas and anime. Like uh, a manga I was reading years ago when I was uh, much younger. It was called uh, Koimoku. Uh, it was it was really good. It was a uh, it was your uh, I guess you call it just a love triangle manga, but I thought it was just very interesting. Of course, it was written by God. What is his name? Im Dal Young. Im Dal Young, the guy who writes Freezing and Kurokami. But you can definitely see there is a very obvious point where he's just like, yeah, you know what? I'm just gonna end this because it goes from the main character having about three or four love interests to all the to all the side love interests completely vanishing him only focusing on one girl and the other love interests actually vanish entirely from the series like they he and the problem is he lives with these love interests like they live in his house but they're just gone that sounds frustrating and he just just suddenly marries the main girl one thing i don't understand is uh why don't they, uh, why don't manga cause ever just, after that series is canceled, why don't they just, like, make a continuation online? Uh, because they don't have the, they don't have, uh, it's I think they, they don't they have don't the have rights. They don't have the rights, per se. No, no, I think, I think that's, I'm not sure how the Japanese industry really works when it comes Unless to manga. Unless they sell themselves into slavery, but, you know, uh, they could just fucking write a, write a light novel. There's nothing well, that's, stopping them from doing that. That's actually that's actually what Kubo himself is doing. Yeah. Or well, I'm not sure if it's Kubo himself, but I know that there are official Bleach light novels that are coming out. Because I think Kubo legitimately loved Bleach, but he was just burned out. He was burned out from drawing, definitely. Kubo is one of the best artists of his generation, and then he just degenerated. Well, that's mostly because he was a uh, he was a prodigy as a kid. Like I think that uh, it was explained that Kubo was one of those people who could literally be considered a prodigy as a child when it comes to art, and he just ended up getting into it. And he was like, you know, I just want to draw cool shit. So he did, and that's how he became the writer of Bleach and the uh, uh, Zombie Powder. Zombie Powder. Oh, I used to read that, but it's. Mm. It only had like, it had like a really short run, didn't it? Yeah, it only had four volumes, and that's because it, it was literally depressing him to write it, so he just yeah. stopped. Yeah, and well, let's see. As a, as a person who can't draw, uh, I can't understand the um, I can't understand the uh, thing about being upset while you're drawing. I'm trying to write. I'm trying to write novels and stuff. I can understand. Uh, I understand more the the feeling of writer's block as opposed to uh, as opposed to getting depressed about what you're making. Cause it, it this also happened to uh, Miura with Berserk because he's like, oh, this is fucked up. This is fucking me up. I'm trying to fuck other people up, and it's just like <laughs> scaring himself. Yo, drawing a skeleton. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> Sitting there, he draws the skeleton. <laughs> Yeah, like, out of that's something movies. I don't understand. How, how is it messing you up if you're fucking just drawing it? It's already in your damn head, so why should well, you bother? That, that's you? what he's saying. Like, he had to keep making, like, depictions of murder, rape, fucking torture, and then it's just like... But see, that's why he added Puck. 
because he's like, I just like drawing something fucking uh, cute and gay once in a while. <laughs> Wait, so, oh, so he wanted to just draw more of Griffith. I'm sorry. Me, you're sorry. You should be sorry. Fucking fag. I, th- I think Griffith's a great villain. I want to say that right now. What does that have to do with what I said? <laughs> I just want I just want to point that out. Fucking I think irrelevant. Griffith's a great villain. A great villain. But, you can tell somebody is a character apologist when every time somebody mentions the character, they're just like, hold on. <laughs> they say something positive? Come on. Exactly, uh, That's like if I was defending like, Shar Aznable every time somebody brought his Jabba <laughs> ass up. He has a great helmet. He has a golden Gundam, you know? A golden mobile suit, I should say. Uh, thank you. I was about to fucking roast the shit out of you for saying that. <laughs> Every mecha is a Gundam. Oh, man. <laughs> I, I want to also talk about, since we're talking about fucking degenerate things like Berserk, I wanted to bring up Japan's growing degeneracy on fucking the mom, their mom fetish. Kasans. Well, see, they were going for little sisters and all Old that sister, shit for years. Older so sister. Down there. Step sister. Twin sister. Older sister. Twin sister. Cousin step sister. Who I call sister. Random woman who I refer to as my Natron. Anyway, so Japan has there's a there was a light novel that came out not too long ago, and it was about uh, this main character. I'm probably gonna get some of this wrong because I I let it blaze through my mind because I didn't want to think about that. Um, it's about a main character and his mother was uh, apparently like she gained pa- she gained like superpowers or something and. It's just very intimate with his mother. I mean, of course, it's Japan, so it's like, oh, that's not too much of a surprise. Oh, it's just skinship. Fucking quotation marks. But here's the problem. Here's the problem. That also continued into another manga that it's, it's not the same type of thing, but it's about a main character's mom suddenly reverting to the same age as him. And that age is 10 years old. So they have a lot of very awkward skinship and things like that. Is Japan going through another one of those weird phases? I think, I I swear, I swear I brought this up to people before and I was like, I'm warning you people, get ready for this. This is going to become a thing. And nobody wanted to listen to me. Here's the full title of that. Listens to you on the first place. Uh Anyway... Here's the full title of that light novel in case you degenerates out there want to look it up. Do you like your mom? Her normal attack is two attacks at full power. Yeah, that's a, that's really the title. It's a light novel. It's a light novel, but those are it's apparently that mom, that light novel has been selling fucking really 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 well. So, my warnings about it becoming an anime, it's going to happen. Oh, I just thought of the perfect title for this podcast. No. It's going to be called Mysterious Girlfriend Degeneration X. Mysterious Girlfriend Degeneration X? I wasn't going to add the gender, but now I have to. (laughs) (laughs) You weren't going to add the gender, gender, but all of a sudden his push got him into this podcast. Exactly. (laughs) (laughs) Why is the... What is going on with the world? Is it just me? Is the world going insane? I think the world's lost it. You mean like North Korea? North Korea thinking that they're gonna be that they're gonna be stepping up to Japan. They're, they're gonna be stepping. Stupid, dude. <laughs> North Korea thinking they're gonna step onto Japan's soil and be like, "Yo, man, this is our land now." And then they look off in the distance and they see the fucking bald eagles and the F twenty two soaring overhead. Oh yeah, you're gonna fucking scare us. North Korea. Yeah. I don't understand what's going through the leaders' minds. I don't understand why they think that they can wage war on the entire world. Well, they're they at a they're at a crucial or, or, or critical point, I should say. And you you can look back in history and learn from it and see this pattern repeating itself. Whenever a nation, uh, especially one such as North Korea, a dictatorship, especially. 
whenever they're running really low on resources, whether that be economic or, you know, natural resources, whatever, manpower, they have two options at that point. One of which is essentially more difficult would be, you know, economic reform, governmental reform, fucking seeking help from outside nations. And other is to wage war. Now, when you're in the position North Korea is in, where even your biggest ally, like your fucking big cousin China, is just like, uh, maybe you should stop, because I don't, I don't, I'm not gonna bail you out anymore. When even they're doing that, and then North Korea is like, nah, I'm gonna pick a fight with South Korea. I'm gonna pick a fight with a uh, with a uh, fucking Japan. I'm gonna keep telling Australia that I'm gonna nuke them. I'm like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna fucking it's so piss on. I- the America, the United States is lying, and then China's just like, dude, shut the fuck up. <laughs> it's so stupid. It's the it is the dumbest thing that you could do. You are challenging one of the world's superpowers by picking on some of our closest friends. Japan's like one of our fucking best friends. Well, I wouldn't say necessarily. Well, at this point, yeah. maybe, but yeah, it's still some like we did fuck y'all niggas up for a while. Yeah, beat them in the submission. Now they love us. Uh, but Christ. the thing is, like, out of, out of the world's superpowers, like, America is obviously mad. It's like, just fucking get in your lane. China's just like, bruh, <laughs> chill out. Maybe you should chill out. Even China's saying that. Russia doesn't give a fuck. They're like, they're just gonna fucking sit back with popcorn. So what, what does North Korea think that they could possibly do? Even if this they had, had a nuke. Even this if... has been said a billion times over. It. Go ahead. If they fire a nuke, we will shoot it down before it even reaches fucking halfway across the country. Even if North Korea has a nuke or two nukes or ten nukes, the United States has 2,000! They, they're not thinking this through. That's not... That's also that's not, not counting count. our air defense system. That's not, that's not that's counting not... our naval... That's also not counting our fucking. Uh, I th- I, th- I was talking with Hawk Kaiser the other day. You brought up because I don't know anything about fucking military tech. Unfortunately, uh, he brought up the fact that we have like an air force. We have things in our air force that can't even be picked up on our and on fucking most other countries' radars. It's true. It's true. They detected fucking hours after the fact. And most of the time, it's because we tell them, like, uh, yeah, we were in your airspace. And they're like, what? <laughs> no, you weren't. <laughs> and the way you were. Like, uh, I don't understand what their plan. What is their plan? What is what is North Korea's five-year plan? <laughs> God. North Korea's plan is probably... Honestly, I think it's just posturing. Because you have to remember, this is this is a fucking society where they believe that their fucking leader doesn't poop. Like this, this is an actual. They don't thing. Believe, they believe that. They're just fucking told to believe that, or else they'll get sent to the camp. They're just they're Kim Jong Un is just putting the idea in his people's heads that there's that we're at they're at war with America. That anytime something bad happens, that it's the Americans. Hell, it became a joke to the North Koreans. They would say every time that something bad happens, up oh, those damn Americans, up oh, there's a famine, those damn Americans taking all of our food. It became a joke to them. They know it's bullshit, but they can't say anything because they live in a society where fucking their leader will feed them to dogs and tigers if they say anything bad. See, what they really need is a, a revolution. With what I'm, army? I'm not saying... What one army? Nigga, the people out... The, the people outnumber the army. Yeah, but the people are also fucking... Weak and hungry. malnourished. Farmers with no rice, nigga. Nigga, starving. Yeah, I mean, dude, that's why people always try to defect to South Korea. Because they're like, oh man, South Korea, people are happy. They're dancing. There's America like three blocks away. No, but um, <laughs> oh, basically, yeah, because it's like, oh, God, it's 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 te- that's one day terrible. sooner, sooner or later. It's probably gonna be sooner. North North Korea can't continue. Like it's gonna fall, and whether it falls from the inside 
or from China's interference, or if you know American allies are just gonna fucking you know, wipe out the Kim Jongs, it's gonna happen. I just don't. I just hope there's no draft or anything. So there I'm shouldn't not. be a draft. There's no reason. There's no. It's not gonna be a fucking land war. It's gonna. Bomb oh, it is gonna be a land. No, they're not gonna bomb that. You can bomb the hell out of the Middle East because it's the fucking Middle East. You can't bomb the hell out of North Korea because they'll bomb the hell out of South Korea and Japan. So oh, yeah, it's gonna that. be a conventional war. So. Well, I don't think we're. I. I'm not gonna say that. It's not gonna, gonna say, if it's not us, somebody's gonna do it, and it's probably gonna be us. I just don't want. I w- I wouldn't want anything to anything like that to erupt. Mostly because I'm a fucking coward and I, I I fear war, but um, I I don't want fucking us to go up against a group of people who we're gonna win. It's, like, it's, not, it's not. It's not like it's not like it would be different if it was like. If like everybody in North Korea, like, like especially the army, like if they were all as fanatical as they seem, or as they're indoctrinated to be, that'd be a problem. Because then they wouldn't give a shit about dying. It'd be like Japan and World War Two, where they they all believed in mm-hmm. the fucking honor. And they didn't give a shit about dying. <laughs> I think North Korea is different. I think that they, in, in the case of die for your leader or let your leader die. I think it would be the latter. So, let that be the final nail in Felix's coffin when Kim Jong Un comes over. When Kim Jong Un comes over, I just want to say, uh, you're at, I, I'll give you all the cheese I have because I know you like cheese. I know you like cheese. You also like basketball players. I'm pretty tall. I, I think I can dunk. Um, I just need a coma groveling before the war even broke out. Y'all. Damn. Yo, I'm just just in case, yo, Red Dawn. Red Dawn. <laughs> Just in case, what was that one game? What was that one game where uh, it was like North Korea somehow home became front. so technologically advanced? It yeah. was home front, and that was actually such a good game that you know Call of Duty ripped it off forever. <laughs> before yeah. I, I, I can I can talk about that before we wrap things up, but. I don't, know if, I don't know if people know. I don't pe- know if people are in the know. Because Homefront, actually a game made by the legendary and dead THQ, introduced all these new concepts. Like, instead of kill streaks, they had point streaks. Whoa. Uh, you could start, you could control the point streaks too, like a tank and a fucking helicopter. Whoa. And uh, they, they had this mode where uh, instead of getting points from killing people you had to go run over and get their dog tags and then guess what game came out two years later hmm black ops oh the most popular mode uh, kill confirmed what you have to run over and get dog tags hmm, oh wait what what else did black ops have oh whoa fucking point streaks instead of kill streaks hmm 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 this is very hmm sounding familiar and what else did home streak have home streak introduced home streak home streak <laughs> uh, just so you know lord activision i am not against you uh if you guys want Home to sponsor front. me, I will definitely write for you. Had a day. system in which instead of leveling up to unlock your weapons, you could buy them at any time. Ooh, look what happened to Call of Duty Black Ops. Ooh, they had the exact same system. Hmm. Hmm. Man, we are just burning tons of bridges right now, aren't we? Who cares about it? Don't matter if you burn bridges as long as you ain't got a village. <laughs> Uh, well, I guess we should uh, uh, start wrapping things up. We have yeah. a new channel, uh, youtube.com you slash. Actually, no, we don't have a custom URL yet. But we have a new channel called the Otaku Clubhouse. And very shortly, we'll, we will begin transitioning <laughs> some of these. <laughs> we? <laughs> we? We? Uh, very soon, we will start moving some of these group videos over to the Otaku Clubhouse channel, and we want you all to go over there and subscribe. Link will be in the description. And, of course, you can always hit all of us up on Twitter if you want. I don't know. Probably not a good idea, considering that some people around here post some very 
very uncouth shit on Twitter. I'm not saying it's any uncouth. Names. The word of the week. Uh, we should also. We really should make a fucking Twitter account for the El Taco Clubhouse. I'll yeah, get around for the time that. being. For the time being, hit me up on at Akuma underscore uh, at Akuma underscore Soul. You know your boy. You guys are supposed to fucking say yours too, you know. Yeah, nah, that's I, not I gonna could. happen. Y'all can just Mine read is... the damn description because I don't remember the name of it. Real talk. At Super Incognito, and then Hakai's cold ass grits. But oh yeah, that's you it. should really change it. <laughs> so, so we'll see you guys on the next podcast, I guess, or if we have videos before that, which uh, we we might have a controversial critic group of things such in the. Can we stop doing this? They know about the series! Critics of controversy. So, Hawkeyser, say goodbye to our... Fuck off. Our listen. Oh, oh.